All right, welcome to another episode of Seeds of Music. I'm your host, Kyle Williams, and this is the number one web show where aspiring independent artists, musicians can learn right now how to gain wider exposure, grow a strong base of raving fans, and make a living doing what they love. So I'm going to jump into another quick announcement. If you tuned into last week's episode, you would notice that I had launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund a Seeds of Music iTunes podcast. Well, I'm excited to announce that that Kickstarter has been successfully funded since then. By the time you're watching this, it has been successfully funded. A shout out and a thanks to everyone who's pledged and shared so far. But I have to add one more, one more caveat to that. Uh, in order to take the podcast to the next level, help it get bigger, help it do more and help you more, I've published the first stretch goal uh, basically, once you meet the initial goal on Kickstarter, you can pu publish a stretch goal and offer more rewards and, and more benefits. So the new stretch goal, basically what uh, I want to do is get an interview with Bob Lefsetz and an interview with Amanda Palmer and to outsource the Seeds of Music quote and Cliff Notes app for the iPhone where you can just log in and kind of get a quick rundown of the main bullet points of each interview as goes so if you want to learn more about these just click on any of the links that i post on the show notes it'll take you right to the kickstarter page and you can see the update that i posted right then and there um if this is the first time you're hearing about the about the kickstarter uh it's basically to launch a podcast version of the seeds of music show to help it reach more people grow bigger, get better interviews, get better information for you guys. Benefit number two is that you can listen to an audio only format of the interviews on your smartphone or tablet when you're stuck in traffic and on the go. So again, check out the Kickstarter, uh, click on the link in the show notes. Uh, if you think a podcast is a great idea, pledge for some great prizes from button pins to guitar lessons, marketing consultations, and awesome promotion for your music on the website. So I got a cool little interview coming up for you in this episode. I actually connected with this artist through Spotify. And I, you know, I know there's a lot of issues with artist royalties on Spotify. Uh, I'm totally aware of that. And it is not good. But however, as a music enthusiast, Spotify is the shiz knit. I've been able to discover a lot of music that I wouldn't have otherwise heard because of the service. And our next uh, guest, Kodomo, aka Chris Child, is one of those artists. I was already digging his music beforehand, had been listening to several of you know his albums uh, on a daily basis. Actually, one of his tracks is is uh, <laughs> is on a favorite playlist of mine called Motivation that I listen to whenever I'm working. And uh, so I decided to reach out to him. I found his website and got his email and reached out to, to the man. So now we're going to uh, delve into, um, with Chris, this concept of working through uncertainty. Because I know uncertainty is this thing that grips everyone that everybody deals with, especially musicians, where you don't know, uh, you know if your next album or next song is going to connect with anyone. You don't know where your career is going. And, and so uh, Chris is going to share with us his experience on dealing with uncertainty throughout his career. All right, let's go. All right, Chris, man, thanks for coming on to Seeds of Music today. Thank you. <laughs> you know, um, I have to say it's like uh, really fun for me because I actually found your music uh, on, on Spotify and I was listening to a couple of your tracks and I really dug it and I thought, man, I'm just going to go ahead and like reach out, reach out to this guy. And so I found your website and I just emailed you and that's the power of the internet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right I mean, well, well, much appreciated. So, um, you know, the the first uh, question I wanted to tackle here is, uh, you know, because we talked a little bit before I hit the record button on this interview, which is like a new thing I've been trying to do. But, um, you know, uncertainty uh, is, it's, it's a scary thing. I mean, for me personally, and for a lot of other musicians, just this, this idea that you don't know um, if you'll be successful at your music career. You don't know if you'll be successful at getting people to your shows. You don't know if you'll be successful at selling your your latest album or your latest single. Um, you know, is uncertainty, is it possible to avoid it or is it something that you just kind of have to go with like and just trust? Uh, I don't think it's possible to avoid it. 
uh, I don't think if you ask anyone uh, who <laughs> has been through any of this, any well, let's just say even more fundamentally, right? Um, uncertainty is inevitable. Yeah, uh, everything is uh, at its core, right? Is uncertain. I, I so the good news is that you can't avoid it. The bad news is that you can't avoid it. I mean, it's it's unavoidable. So really, the the the, um, the only way to approach that is to to um, uh, to make it workable. Um, so to find to, to find a way to work within that context. In other words, this is you know we're born into this. This is what we have to work with. Right. This is the, the kind of arena that we're in. Yeah. So we need to develop some kind of sane, coherent way of, of dealing with it. Um, that's uh, that's the work. And for it, like right. for you, like what I mean, what do you uh, like? Is there some kind of method that you? Because obviously, uncertainty is going to crop up on a day to day basis. Like, and I can, right. I agree. Like, I deal with uncertainty like every time. I wake up and every time I fall asleep, you know, especially I don't know what I'm going to dream about. That's uncertain too. But, uh, I mean, it, what have you developed like as far as like a method or a way of thinking that's helped you to cope with uncertainty and push forward, like despite mm -hmm. not knowing like what the hell is going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's great that you're framing it in the context of, uh, say, you know, working on a record or releasing a record or even just like, you know, going into um, to music with, with an aspiration to, uh, to, to be a, a musician, a successful musician. Or, you know, again, that, uh, that word successful is, is uh, relative. Um, we'll, but, we'll think about but, it in terms of, of but, but, you know, making, yeah. have it, getting to the point where people are willing to, to pay to see you Cer or pay certainly. for your album. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So, uh, in, in my experience, you know, I think um, there's, you know, there's different kind of uh, categories you could sort of look at. But, uh, you know, one of, first and foremost, I think, you know, developing craft uh, is a really important uh, uh, kind of fundamental thing, you know, right? I mean, it, like, uh, saying, okay, I'm going to spend, you know, there's a certain amount of, uh, you could say, discipline yeah. uh, uh, to, to that, to, to basically really, you know, de uh, develop craft, you know, what, whatever, whatever that means. It could be, uh, how do you balance that, though? I mean, how do you balance, like, how do you balance, like, building, you know, developing your craft while also, uh, you know, working with the uncertainty, uncertainty of, like, a musical career? Right. So working. So okay. So you're, you're talking really, you know, fundamentally, how 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 are, how are you working with uncertainty as it applies to uh, music, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think develop. I mean, I, I think this goes back further um, in developing some kind of relationship with uncertainty um, that uh, you know you might say is a relaxed attitude. So, okay. Um, I think, um, you know, in my experience, you know, we being musicians, human yeah. beings, artists, tend to, tend to go to either extremes, you know, like, like, uh, well, freak I, out I, or, uh, I, I, yeah, <laughs> you freak out. I gotta, I gotta do this and this and this, yeah. I'm gonna do all this work and, yeah, like, I don't and it a, could yeah. amount to absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to do any work, um, or, you know, um, I'm gonna like. I'm I'm doing all this work, um, and I'm doing and I'm doing more work, and I'm still freaking out, you know, because I, <laughs> I don't yeah. know what's really happening. So yeah. I think again, it's like, especially in the beginning, like start s starting small is a really good uh, like like uh, like how small approach, um, you know, depending on the aspirations. In other words, like. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the biggest discrepancies is this um, is this notion that uh, things just happen you know, out of the vacuum. Like, you know, one artist you haven't heard of one day, and then suddenly, boom, 
um, there's, you know, whoever. Yeah. So think of anyone being yeah. uh, And uh, they were just, they were just amazing. And that's how it happened. When really that's, that's not how it happens. There's this path, right? There's this kind of longevity of building blocks that leads, you know, mm -hmm. uh, through, through these, these causes and conditions which um, develop and, Take, <laughs> may take winding paths. Everyone's path is different, right? Some are faster and slower, but ultimately things just don't happen uh, yeah. without, without some kind of cause condition development. So, so maybe keeping that in mind. So yeah, so keeping that in mind, I think having, um, uh, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going to relay it back to my experience as say, uh, an electronic music composer, um, uh, having uh, some kind of concept or idea uh, that you would like to bring to fruition. Uh, so with, within the means of actually what you have. So it could be like... Uh, so not obsessing over like uh, resources or equipment that you don't have. Oh, like you're like, oh, I can't make this no. song because... Because I've noticed no. I, I've fallen into yeah. the trap world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't have yeah. uh, blah, blah, blah plug-in or right. blah, blah, blah. Uh, piece of equipment, um, right. but can I really? I, I mean, I could really create without it, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, you can create without it. There's, there's amazing records of all facets and pieces of music that are done with with uh, very little equipment or, yeah. or a lot of equipment. Really, you know, the it's it's. Uh, I think what's more important is um, starting starting small, but having kind. Of, Having a clear picture, having a concept of what it is that you want to achieve, uh, and being flexible at the same time in terms of you know allowing that to uh, to shift and, and change. I think that really comes down to, to developing an attitude of uh, curiosity, uh, and uh, as well as um, maybe carefreeness, maybe. Yeah, a, as well as a relaxed, a relaxed attitude, uh, and and also not giving yourself, you know, a daunting task, right? If you're saying, like, if you're approaching it with like, oh, I gotta get, you know, I gotta get, get, get that uh, uh, Mercury Lounge, you know, first time, whatever, and or I'm, I'm calling, I'm not getting any gigs, I, I, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh you know, yeah. No, yeah. no one, no one gets to give that. I'm not right. top forty. I should just quit. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Or, 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 you know, whatever. I'm not. I mean, there's going to be a thousand reasons, you know, that you, that would suggest that to you. Yeah. So I think, um, I think here, here's 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 the thought really uh, is that goal, right? So you should set yourself goals. I think I find that very helpful. But the goal should push you. Uh, it should push you. Uh, into areas that are that are maybe a little uncomfortable um, and not familiar, uh, but it shouldn't be overwhelming and daunting. And uh, so that that's that's sort of base one is starting, you know, giving yourself a clear concept, a clear goal, whatever. Again, those intentions could be different things, right? It could be I want to get a gig, I want to get, uh, I want to release an album, I want to write a song. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you have to start there. Maybe you just have to write write a song. Or, I want to collaborate with other musicians. I want to, I want to score a film. I want oh, that might be daunting. How about yeah. I want to score, you know, an episode or keep going down until you can get, you know, try to start it, start at like the foundation, build the foundation. I think is is, is good there. So giving yourself kind of these building block. Um, so really, you know, that's that's uh, um, the the reality of it is is that whatever those things are that's not going to get you exactly what you want to get, but it's leading you there. Okay, yeah, it's these, on kind of this path. twisted path. You have to like remember that the, the path isn't going to be straight, so you kind of the have to is, aim for something, yeah, and then the process of getting that, then right, you're going to realize what else you can... But you, don't, but you don't want to aim in the dark, in other words. You, yeah. know, you, know, you, want, you want a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, so having clarity, like you know, having like yeah. an overall yeah. vision of what you're... Exactly. For. Having an overall vision, giving yourself goals, giving yourself a concept, giving yourself goals that are realistic, that maybe push you a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, having some kind of notion of what it is that you're setting out to doing, 
uh, and then maintain a certain amount of flexibility and curiosity because inevitably things will happen that you don't expect to happen and uh, if you shut them off too quickly you know you, you might be kind of closing the door to, to something that might be interesting to lead to something do you have a, do you have like a an example in like your experience of like a goal that you set in in you know you set out to re reach and then you like achieve that goal and then you found out that it um, you know, it helps you understand where to take a move next. I mean, what's your experience been with uh, goal setting? Like, how do you approach it? Um, yeah, it's great. I think it's really important. Uh, I I uh, I try actually every every year. I know it's like a, a New Year's re resolution thing, but I um, uh, take it pretty seriously. I write it out. Um, I write out. You know, I think big picture, and okay. and, and then I like to to go back. From there, so, so kind of reverse engineering. Yeah, I've heard of. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of that a lot, especially from other, like people in the business and entrepreneurial so, space. So I think I think it's helpful to um, uh, divide up uh, this whole thing into multiple categories because, uh, and this is this is where it really does help to actually write this stuff down and think this out, really uh, kind of be clear about about. Why am I doing this? First of all, yeah, that, that's, that's where you sort start. of fundamental question, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, what is it that I'm doing? And there's, and as soon as you answer that question, what is it that I'm doing? You realize there's all these facets to it. Um, like for me, there is. Uh, I want to put out this album. Right? Still, like in 2008, um, I didn't even think about live shows and whatnot, and I want to get my music out to other people, right? These are all sort of part of the thing. Um, so then the whole live show, and that just became a separate component in and of itself. That's a whole separate work process with separate sets of goals. What was that experience like, actually. though? Um, doing, uh, you know, releasing an album, but having live shows be separate. I mean, were you able to gain a lot of momentum? Did that work for you? Uh, just uh, releasing it um, without a live show to uh, follow it up. The yeah, actually yeah, but it took uh, it took a few years. I think I I don't think I got um, I think still I took really two. It wasn't really till two thousand. It, it came out the end of two thousand eight, uh, and it wasn't really till two thousand ten that it started to get attention um, uh, online on, on uh, NPR um, radio. Uh, and there's there's kind of a a, a moment, yeah, a momentum there, uh, and then I started doing live shows, uh, incorporating that, and uh, that that certainly reinforced that. If you could go back and change, like you know, one way that you approached uh, the creation and release and promotion of Still Life, what would it be? Um. I would actually focus more on live shows. Uh, I think I was for a very long time uh, um, most, most, and still am really most comfortable in the studio and most interested. That's, that's kind of where I find um, my, uh, my niche. Um, but I think it's, it's still important um, to as a way of actually, the most important way of connecting your music to other people, yeah. in, in my opinion, is still playing uh, live shows. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, just because uh, there's, a, there's a personal connection there, people see you, um, you might hang out and meet and talk, and just uh, activity happens there that you can't do. Yeah, uh, well, you get that face. To, I mean, if it's all about. And I, I feel like that um, for the modern do-it-yourself musician or independent artist that that wants to take control um, of their career, it, it all comes down to relationships. And yeah. you can do a lot on, on, online for sure, but it still doesn't compare to see, meeting someone face-to-face -face saying, you know, hi, I'm Kyle, or hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Right. What's your name? What are, you, what are you up to? Like, are you a musician? Uh, where can right. I find your music? You know, and and right. and just taking it a step beyond there. Like I, right. I can think of a ton of I can think of a lot of artists that 
if I went to their show uh, and they did that, then I would be like, you know, my I would be like, holy shit, like I who does that? Because right. you know, I mean. I'm not. Uh, I'm not able to uh, to go to every show that that comes through uh, Los Angeles financially. You know, I would if I could. Right. Uh, but I, I, just, I can't think of anybody that does that. You know, that right. that's at the um, that's at like a certain like level. Like not like the big names, obviously. Um, but right. but just you know the 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 artist that is still slug you know slugging it out that still feels like they want to improve you know that they want to garner more fans and and sell more records or sell more songs and build like better relationships right well i think all 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 artists that's that's like a lifelong aspiration yeah kind of constantly but this does go back to again i think some artists kind of they fall off the boat though well sure oh certainly you get laid yeah you get laid yeah i have like huge huge i got (laughs) one specific one in mind but i'll just leave it okay (laughs) well i'm sure just fell off yeah, he's fell yeah. off it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. But I, again, I think all this goes back to feasibility as well. In other words, like uh, if I, again, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? Like if I would have, if I look back in two thousand and eight, right, and uh, still life was really a, at the center of uh, of my attention. Um, I don't know if I would have had. Uh, enough energy to actually uh, cultivate, you know, a, a live set that that uh, uh, that I, you know, that I that I feel would be compelling enough. Um, so I was dealing with the resources that I had at the time, which was, you know, I have have this project. I'm giving my all to it, uh, and um, that's stage one. So. Uh, you know, again, you, you can look back and you can say, okay, I could have done this and this, but really, um, I think it's important to realize you only have so much time uh, and your attention is uh, uh, energizing, right? It requires a lot of energy. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I'm totally not cutting this out, by the way. Okay. Uh, all right. We keep it real here. All right. Keep, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, in, in Williamsburg, too. <laughs> um, so, sorry, I lost my train of thought. But, um, well, I can say uh, I totally did, too. Wow. So maybe we'll move on to the, to the next. Yeah. Well, no, again, I, okay, we're, we're in feasibility. Again, again, I think it just, like, uh, Make, making whatever it is that you're working on, right? Or whatever aspiration that you're setting. Oh, having energy for yourself. And focus. Yeah. It, well, well, having energy and focus, but also like like uh, being feasible about it. In other words, like, um, and I will say that uh, it's it's difficult to do everything at once. So, again, yeah. having a starting point where you can be like put your attention into one thing that's really important for me, and I and I would still suggest this, like. Because it's at the forefront of everything is the music. So put the attention into the music. Yeah. Um, and then when uh, the music's done, you put the attention into. Yeah, what that, it takes that, to get it's it a done. Nat- it's a natural extension of that exactly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. So next, um, next question I had was, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, this, about like having a blank slate. You know, where you kind of, um, particularly, I'm thinking. You have like an artist that um, is kind of like just at the beginning, and 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 their whole music career seems like a blank, a blank slate. In in your experience, like what have you found is the most effective strategy for building off of a blank, a blank slate? Yeah, that's that's the that's the most difficult part. So you're talking you're talking about uh, how do you start a piece? Yeah, just like right? getting off uh, for for those like in our audience, like who maybe just you know right. getting started, you know. Right. Uh, well, you know, it, it's it's daunting because uh, not because there's not there's a lack of of, of uh, you know options right to get started. It's because there's infinite amount of options to get started. Okay. So it's like so. How do you so you got to realize there's just there's 
it's infinite, right? You could you could start in, in so many other ways. So uh, because of because of that notion, again, I think it helps to have some kind of interest uh, or idea of what it is that you're doing, uh, while maintaining flexibility uh, to to allow it to um, uh, emerge that um, you're not you're not killing it. From, from the beginning because it's not what you thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but having some kind of concept is really, is really uh, helpful uh, and it helps focus your work. Um, it helps motivate you uh, to finish it uh, and it gives it a kind of narrative and story that's yeah. personal to you. Uh, and it could be, uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, fantastical. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know. A, a well, how did how did you find your concept? I mean, because like, like, yeah, it's. I mean, it's definitely. A, I can understand it's useful, not like essential to have like a concept of of where you want to take your music. But um, if you're starting from a blank slate, um, if if someone like maybe some right. people they they might not, they might be unsure. Maybe some artists are unsure about where 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 they should go. Like, how do you actually develop? that that concept i mean how do you actually find out what your what your concept is yeah right well uh so so with still life um the concept and the the kind of impetus of the record was uh these these photographs that i'd taken uh and the idea was to um see uh see what i can come up with um when I actually kind of absorb myself in the fo in, in one of these photos, mm -hmm. uh, so I would place the photo, you know, next to a computer uh, or next to a piano or next to a synthesizer or whatever, uh, and see was kind of explore. Not it wasn't like it wasn't like literally interpreting that that photo, but it was basically like let's see what happens. Yeah. So kind of maintaining it's almost like this is an experiment. I'm going to place this photograph of this space. You know, next to his keyboard, and see what ideas are about. Um, so that's that's something. In other words, you had a blank slate, yeah. and now you've actually like, boom! Here's this picture. What's going to happen? That's yeah. Um, see, that's neat because it's like you took a different type of medium and used it right. as like right. a starting place for right. for the actual like music that you're making instead of sitting down like and staring at a white wall and then thinking, okay, what do I write now? You know, because some people may uh, be hit by inspiration from events in their lives, but mm -hmm. I can see how that could be a useful uh, technique too, is to, right. is to take inspiration from from a concept outside of music, you know? And that yeah. could be pho photography or that could be ideas, you know? You yeah, ideas is, right, a, a poem or a story or... An, or, or I could just I, make songs yeah. that are all based off of water, right? And, and like whatever water right. means to you musically, right. whatever right. sound, right. And you just go with that, right? Right. I mean, the point is, it's it's a conscientious choice to start with something. Yeah. So, uh, and it could be it could be anything, but it should be something that interests you, that you have some kind of curiosity about, uh, that you find motivating and inspiring. Um, uh, other otherwise, you'll fall asleep. You know? Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's yeah, no so yeah, well, be like then, then why, why, why do it if I'm not, uh, yeah. uh, you know, another aspect, I think, uh, you could say concept, which is, so if you think of like, how do you start in a way, and I, and I talked to a lot of friends who are, you know, musicians and, and artists, uh, there's, there's no shortage of ideas. You know, ideas are constantly like making constantly their way coming out head. of people's Con rear ends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like they're just flying around. Yeah, um, everywhere. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's gonna. It could be at any any point in time, right? You could be you could be near your, your instrument and just start, you know, plunking out a few chords. And oh, that's kind of an interesting chord progression. And eh, you know, maybe I'll use it sometime. And then you forget about it, uh, or you have this idea for something, and then it's like, oh, that's kind of cool, and you forget about it. So. Capturing those, I think, is, is really important. So I've kind of made a habit of having some kind of, uh, and now it's like easier than ever, you know. Uh, you just use your phone or something. You just use your phone, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or you email yourself an idea. So having having some kind of like container method to collect these ideas in. Yeah. So, uh, I think like so one of the things, 
What's that? Um, so I was just going to say that uh, I think Danny Elfman just carries around yeah. like a recorder and then he'll just yeah. speak nonsense into the recorder whenever he has an idea. That's right, pretty right. cool. Yeah, or, or you know, have a piano in my apartment. So, yeah. uh, but you know, no other real gear. So sometimes I'll I'll just sit down and, and come up with some chords, mm -hmm. and uh, if if I find something interesting, I'll I'll record it, and uh, I basically amass you know a bunch of different chord progressions mm -hmm. over time, and I just simply put those into a, a folder, uh, an, an audio folder. And I'll just go through them sometimes yeah. and, and listen. Oh, there's kind of an interesting. I one. just did that a couple of days ago. I did that a couple. <laughs> I maybe did it a couple of years ago. Yeah. But uh, I I now have this like collection of hundreds of hundreds of chord progressions yeah. or, or ideas. And you can just kind of that pick from that literally I could then uh, I could flesh out and produce if I wanted to yeah. or or not or it might be a piece of something else or who who knows but. Yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of another method I think of, of inspiration. That's that's I would describe it as just raw inspiration, like yeah. stuff stuff that comes to you that you probably out of habit uh, and and not trusting uh, just ignore. But uh, uh, you know, with the, just a little bit of effort and, and literally one of these these you know PDA phones that <laughs> you know capture it, yeah. save you know save it for later. It may it may be very useful. Yeah, that's it is useful. I mean, I've been doing the same thing. I still have uh, yet to flush them out, but um, just having them, like, I'll always have those high ideas, and I've forgotten most of them. But um, but uh, I wanted to get real quick into uh, what you're doing now. Like, what are you sure. up to now? Uh, so I just finished uh, my third album. Uh, it's going to be called Patterns and Light, and I'm uh, going to release it uh, probably early next year. Um, depending on how how, uh, how it all goes um, for Feb February or March uh, release uh, with a few um, singles um, leading up to that um, and uh, I have a few shows scheduled in New York um, possibly one in Japan uh, this, this winter and which is where you grew up right yeah according yes, to your Wikipedia yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's actually that is. I accurate. do my research. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's hence the name. <laughs> yeah. Where did you research. grow up in Japan? Uh, in Tokyo. Uh, jealous. Very jealous. <laughs> nice it's, man. It, it's a it's a great yeah it's a great city. It's uh, uh, it's it's crazy. It, it lives up to all its stereotypes, uh, and <laughs> and it will constantly surprise what stereotypes? you. Stereotypes. <laughs> I well, I don't know. I, I think of like Lost in Translation. You know, it's like oh, the, okay. epit the epitome of the stereotype Tokyo, which, oh. which really, it's really. Well, that's another conversation. I won't go down. That okay, point. right on, right. Japan. On. Who anyone wants to visit Japan? It's not all like that. That's just the the, the total stereotype. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> well, um, I got one last question for you. Uh, this yes. Is a fun question. Uh, what is your favorite album, and what would your life be like if it never existed? Oh, it's a great question. Uh, very difficult. Um, can can we phrase it as? Uh, no, just answer the question. All right. Okay. I'm gonna go with Depeche Mode Violator. Okay. And what would your life be like if I went back in time and, uh, and totally obliterated it <laughs> from your life? Um. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. Um, I don't think I'd have the same level of, of uh, intense passion for synthesizers uh, as I do. Okay. As I currently do. So you might be uh, playing country western, basically. Uh, uh, I I would really hope that's that wouldn't be the case, but uh, <laughs> this maybe. Is a wild guess. maybe I'm trying to know. think of the opposite of the synthesizer, and that's why. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, that that is pretty as, as opposite as you get. Um, yeah, that would. Um, that would be interesting. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. That's how my brain works. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, it's, that's great. That's great. It's great questions. But uh, Chris, man, this has been um, an awesome interview. It was great to see the whole process of discovering your music through the power of the new technology and connecting this way. And I hope that um, we'll go on to like, you know, build a relationship of our own and, and, and just show a lot of like people 
other musicians out there that uh, you know just the, that's the power like to build relationships like through the technology it's there you just have to come at it and be genuine and uh, and then be genuine some more on top of that <laughs> yes yes and 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 uh, patience patience diligence perseverance yeah. we were chatting for a while before I even I even started <laughs> this I kind of felt I kind of felt bad because I was like yeah I want to capture this because he's riffing on some pretty like awesome stuff so I was like okay let's let's go ahead and start the right. interview but yeah it's been exciting man and uh, let's stay in touch okay awesome okay. guy and that wraps up another episode of seeds of music on this episode we had chris child aka kodomo on the show sharing his story sharing his experience so make sure to check out his links below and check out his music really awesome guy had a lot of fun in this interview next sign up for the email newsletter if you haven't already this is the best way to stay up to date with everything going on and that will be going on with Seeds of Music. And a quick note, uh, again, the Kickstarter, if you haven't had a chance to check it out or share it or pledge, just click on the links on the show notes, head over to the Kickstarter page, learn more if you don't know, pledge, share, 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 share. Next, like and share. Oh, more more sharing, actually. There's a ton of sharing going on. Uh, if you like this interview, make sure to like and share it, too. There you go. It's a ton of sharing, but I know it's all, about, uh, it's all about sharing, right? Sharing is caring. So next, comment on the video. What was your greatest takeaway from the interview? How will you apply what you've learned? And who would you like to see interviewed? Is that person someone else or is that person you? Either way, send an email to kyle.seedsofmusic at gmail.com and let me know. I would love to hear from you. See you next time, guys.